cross sections of three dimensional figures. We're at 11.1c. So we have two previous videos for chapter 11, 11.1a 11 and b, and they're linked in this description if you need them along with the geometry playlist. A cross section is the intersection of a three dimensional figure and a plane. So you can see on this cone, we've got a circle here if we go parallel to the base, and if we go on a slant, we'll get an ellipse as a cross section. It's a two dimensional slice of a three dimensional object, and different cross sections of an object will provide different shapes. So if we cut this cylinder parallel to the base, we'll get a circle. But if we cut it going perpendicular, we'll get a rectangle. And with this cone, as we said before, we'll get a circle. Or if we go this way, we'll get an ellipse, an oval. A cross section parallel to the base of a square pyramid will be a square. We'll have a square here. And if we did the cross section parallel to the base of a triangular pyramid, we'd have a triangle. And this cross section would be a point at the vertex of the cone. If we sliced off a corner of this cube, we can make a triangular cross section. And if a two dimensional plane sliced diagonally through a cube, the cross section would be a rectangle. The cross section of a cylinder can be a circle or a rectangle. Depends on where the plane is slicing it. Circle, rectangle. So we can see the rectangle here. And the cross section of a pentagonal prism can be a pentagon if it's parallel to the base, or it could be a square or rectangle depending on the size of and shape of the pentagonal prism. So here I have a foam cube that I got from a craft store and some poster board and we can see this is a cylinder, and if we slice it with this red plane, this poster board, we can see that the shape we get is a rectangle. See? And here I have a foam cone. See? And it's being sliced with the black poster board as the plane, and if we slice it perpendicular to the base, we're going to get a triangle. See? the cross-section. Back in video 9.5a in chapter 9, we talked about the planes of symmetry, so we could actually look at these as cross-sections. We've got this rectangular prism, and if we slice it right here, we're going to have a square cross-section. Here we'll have a rectangular one. Look at this triangular prism. If we slice it like this, we'll have a triangle, but if we slice it this way, we'll have a rectangle. And of course, if you didn't see this video, there'll be a link in the description for you. Now this is kind of cool. In Japan, they grow some watermelons in the shape of a cube. So how can we slice it to make a cross section that's a square, or a hexagon, or a trapezoid? We could make a square by slicing it perpendicular to the base or parallel to the base, couldn't we? But what about a hexagon or a trapezoid? By cutting through the midpoints of the six edges, we can cut a cube to have a hexagonal cross-section. These are all the midpoints of these edges, and if we slice it that way on those six edges at the midpoints, we'll get a hexagonal cross-section. By cutting through two midpoints and two vertices, we could cut a cube to have a trapezoidal cross-section. If we slice a rectangular prism parallel to the bases, we'll get a rectangular cross-section. A triangular prism can have a triangular cross-section if cut parallel to the base, or a rectangular cross-section if cut perpendicular to the bases. For a cone, 
There's four types of conic sections depending on the location of the intersecting plane. So depending on the slant of the plane, we could have a circle if it's parallel to the base. We could have an ellipse. We could have a parabola. That's this one. We could also have a hyperbola if we slice it coming down like this. A degenerate conic is a point, a line, or two intersecting lines that are formed when a plane intersects the vertex of a double-napped right cone. So here are some degenerate conic sections. The point and lines we get by slicing a plane through the vertex are called degenerate conic sections. So we'll get a point when the plane goes through the vertex of the cone. We'll get a single line. See that red line? when the plane is tangent to the cone, and here we'll get a pair of intersecting lines. See the X, the two lines intersecting? So what's happening on that last one is imagine a plane just sliced straight down this way, like this. We'd have this piece and this piece, and on a graph, on a coordinate plane, it would actually look like this. That would be hyperbola. So imagine a sharp sheet of glass came straight down like this. We would have that piece come off and that piece come off, and the cross sections would make these pieces here. So the plane cuts parallel to the cone axis. And what we would have is this hyperbola, and these dotted lines here are the asymptotes We've got a transverse axis, that's a bright yellow here. We've got a conjugate axis. Now I know a lot of you are following me along in the Holt McDougall geometry book, but some of you are not using that book. Like in the Carnegie Learning Geometry, chapter 13, you're going to be learning about the equation of a parabola, hyperbolas, directrix, focus, asymptotes. And there's links in this description to my Algebra 2 Chapter 10 videos that discuss those if you are covering this in geometry. If you're following me in the Holt McDougal, it's not in this book. And you'll be learning about hyperbola and vertices and the center and the branches. These are the branches of the hyperbola and the asymptotes. Those are the lines that are intersecting here. So know that you can just click on the description and go to those if you need to. So for a recap of 11.1, prisms and cylinders have two bases. Pyramids and cones have one base. Prisms and cylinders have only flat surfaces. Cylinders and cones have curved surfaces. And three-dimensional figures can be identified from a net the unfolded 3D figure, by looking at the net's shape and the number of faces it has. So that would be a triangular prism, wouldn't it? And that would be a cube. So now we're going to move on to lesson 11.2, which I have split into three different videos so that you're not watching an hour-long video or a 40-minute video. We're going to start with volume of prisms, then we're going to do volume of cylinders, and we're going to finish it with volume of composite 3D figures. So that's cross-sections of 3D figures, and now you know what happens when we slice this double-napped right cone like this, and you can see the hyperbola, hyperbola that it makes. I hope this was helpful. Remember, there's links in the description if you need them. Have a great day, and I'll see you for the next lesson. Bye.